Welcome back to Five Live. You know we love talking about video games on this show. Trying uh, something a little different today, and it wasn't just that real cool wipe <laughs> that you just saw. Do <laughs> things a little it. differently here today. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to talk to our friend Emma Fife from Venn, which is a new 24/7 streaming network about video games and more. Emma, thank you so much for being here with us on Five Live. Of course, thank you so much for having me. And you know, I, I'm glad we all got the memo about, you know, coordinating our outfits. So <laughs> yep. I feel like we're off to a great start. Yeah. <laughs> Green and black theme. I don't know why it just kind of worked out that way today, but the first story does have kind of a, a sad tone for GTA fans. It seems like once every few years, government, parents, groups, whomever, will single out a few video games they find problematic. But this time, it's Illinois State Representative Marcus Evans Jr. who introduced a bill which would ban the sale of popular video game Grand Theft Auto, amongst others, in response to a rise in carjackings in Chicago. Emma, what is happening here? Well, you know, it seems like, as you say, every few years, uh, people in government or parent groups are kind of looking for what I would say is a scapegoat to not <laughs> deal with the real underlying issues of perhaps socioeconomic inequalities or uh, mental health issues. Look, here's yeah. the thing is that video games get blamed for violence a lot and while certainly there have been studies that show a correlation in kids playing violent video games you know decreasing their levels of empathy and things like that none of the studies are conclusive enough to say that video games are the cause video games can be a factor but no one's ever been able to definitively prove that video games cause any kind of uh, radical change in somebody's behavior. So as far as these carjacking goes, like, look, that would be like saying that I'm out there breaking into my neighbor's houses, breaking all of their pots because I love Legend of Zelda. Like, that's simply <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you this much. I have no empathy, uh, famously, but I'm still not violent. So um, I actually, I'll say, I was there at the launch of GTA V, the current version for all intents and purposes, and yeah. that was way back in 2012. So does this state rep think that it took eight years for the game to finally inspire carjackings? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a very good point. I mean, one would think that there would have been an astronomical rise in carjackings if, in fact, it was directly correlated with GTA 5 in 2012, as you say, when the game launched. So it's not like people just, like, spent, you know, eight years of their lives learning and going, okay, well, GTA, is that's, that's my actual life now. Yes, now it is time to take to the streets after I have trained in Grand Theft Auto for so long. Right. And without going into the where are the parents debate, which I think you know is, is valid, don't you think that like a hyper-political environment, uh, a pandemic where people, especially kids, have a ton of idle time, uh, coupled with like an actual policy in Chicago that prevents police from chasing suspects who steal cars might have something to do with the uptick? I mean, you yeah. kind of touched on this before. Exactly. So again, it, it's the whole idea of, of video games are being used as they so often are as an excuse, it feels like, for people in Chicago to not take a look at what's going on in their city and go, okay, what's really causing this? As you say, you know, we're in a pandemic. A lot of people are without jobs. There's all kinds of economic crisis going on. And so I think that, quite frankly, again, they're looking for an easy out, and there right. isn't an easy right. solution to this. Like, like you mentioned, Emma, it, it's, it's really easy to look for a scapegoat. And it, this seems to like happen all the time. You go straight to what the kids are into. I mean, it's yes. either books or rock and roll music. It was Pogs. comic books back in the day. Pogs were yeah, Pogs. crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, and in this day and age, it just seems to be video games. Well, I mean, it's because if you look at it, like something like 97% of people sort of ages 12 to 17 play video games. But ultimately, as far as this particular instance goes with GTA, this is a little bit different in some ways because this is more targeting an event that's happening being carjackings, which I assume are, is not largely being done by 14-year-olds. But again, <laughs> right. it's like, it's that idea of, okay, well, first it's, it's, you know, video games are ruining our children, and now video games are ruining our adult population who feel the need to go steal cars because they did it yeah. once in a Grand Theft Auto game? I don't think so. I mean, with that kind of thinking, maybe we should create a game where, I don't know, like Animal Crossing, where people just uh, are in harmony, and they teach you to uh, be charitable <laughs> and very nice to one another. 
<laughs> Urban farming yeah. really takes Urban off farming. in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> New from Rockstar, hugging the game. Yeah. <laughs> So I know we're joking and we're saying a lot of what are the parents, where are the parents, what can they do? Should parents be limiting maybe or, or doing something about the amount of time kids are spending on video games because we're in a pandemic and a lot of them are just logging into Zoom and yeah, not going to school? <laughs> it's, a, it's a really complicated issue sure. because if you think about even your own social interactions during a pandemic, how do you socialize? It's all online. So effectively, these kids are getting all of their socialization from video games. Right. And, and so if you look at games that, like something like Fortnite, which of course is incredibly popular amongst sort of the teen um, and older kid group, they that's how they're socializing. And it's unfortunate from the point of view of it, it's, it is certainly not your sort of normal face-to-face -face socialization, which is one of the biggest things that kids are missing out on by not being able to be in school in person. So I think that, yes, it's you should limit screen time to some degree in that you certainly want to still encourage your kids to, like, I don't know, go outside and go on walks sure. as much as mm -hmm. they can. But how else are they going to get the experience of playing with their friends oh, yeah. right. if not in video games. That's a really good point. Well, uh, also some people are just born inside kids, and I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but let's double down on divorcing ourselves from reality. The future is here with new virtual reality headset upgrades uh, on the way from PlayStation. It's easier and cheaper than ever to live out futuristic fantasies with space age tech. Uh, CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, Jim Ryan, recently revealed the company's VR plans for a new VR headset for the PS5. It features a single cord and more advanced technology than ever before. Um, I, I will say this, I was an early adopter. I had a, uh, I had a VR headset, we put it on Larry King and uh, he, he hated it, but you know we were right at the beginning of that in 2015. Um, and I think since then we've been trying to say VR is here, VR is here. Is it finally now actually here? I mean, it's certainly going to be accessible in so much as it will be accessible to anybody who's managed to actually get a PS5, uh, right. which is not as many people as would like to buy PS5s, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. But if, if you look at sort of the history of the evolution of the VR headset, and you have things like the original Oculus and then the Oculus Quest. The Oculus Quest has gone wireless, so there are some people that are a little critical of the fact that the PlayStation VR is going to be a wired headset, albeit just a, a, a single wire. And as amazing as it is to be totally wireless with a VR headset, you do also kind of run the risk of coming up against you know, like the frame rate dropping, and mm -hmm. you need a relatively powerful PC in order to properly run those VR experiences. Well, with the PlayStation 5, which is effectively a computer unto itself, just one that comes complete, you don't have to add all the components to it, like you build a PC, you can literally just have it, hook it up to your TV or a monitor and play. I mean, for anybody that's looking to get into VR, this definitely has a huge amount of appeal. I mean, the PlayStation 4 VR already did relatively well. I, I, I mean, like for one, my dad has a PlayStation 4 VR headset and like loves playing Resident Evil 7 in VR. So yeah. again, like- Your dad's the, pretty cool. I know. Yeah, <laughs> he's, a, he's a pretty cool gamer. He also uh, hooked up his M1 MacBook to his, you know, 72 inch TV screen to play World of Warcraft. So uh, what I'm saying is that, you know, my dad is definitely a gamer, but it is very much something that becomes a lot more accessible when you do have it as a thing that is compatible with a console. Also something like 87% of PlayStation 5 owners are signed up for a PlayStation Plus subscription. So if PlayStation were to start offering up VR titles as part of PlayStation Plus, then you're automatically exposing people to, hey, you just have to buy the hardware for this, and then you're going to be able to experience all of these VR games that you're effectively already paying for with your PlayStation right. Plus subscription. So you get more people on board with the whole VR sort of situation. 
I'm also really curious because with the PlayStation 5 VR, they have uh, talked a little bit about how they're going to be incorporating the controls modeled after the new PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, which has gotten amazing reviews. I have to say the haptic feedback on it is super fun. I was playing a game where uh, I was firing a bow and like I used the back trigger and it felt like a bowstring quivering. So it's wow, really awesome. cool. I'm excited to see like how that evolves as well. Awesome. Emma, a lot of our viewers are already pretty tech savvy because they're yes. watching us on the KTLA Plus app, which just came out. Very exciting. <laughs> um, nice. But if people want to watch you, see more of you, watch more Ven, where should they go? Yeah, so you can head over to Venn.tv, check out the download, which airs at 10 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday, with a rebroadcast at 6 p.m. You can also check out the VODs there. Uh, and then we've also got a bunch of great content over on the Venn Download YouTube channel as well. Emma, thank you so much. We'll see you next week, I hope, yeah. as we continue this, uh, this wonderful partnership. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Emma. We'll be right back with more Five Live right after this. I want to get... Uh, completely my whole life in view.